Hello Ravers and welcome to the Electric DM10, a mini-series for the DJs and producers that have carried their names into the journey of sound for at least a decade and more. During the time of this recording and posting, the project being covered is still in the professional EDM scene, creating bangers, touring slash performing, or both. As the world of electronic music has countless DJs and producers, many qualify for the 10 plus year streak series. Being in the EDM industry for this amount of time is no easy task, let alone in the professional environment. With that said, this series of videos will briefly cover the project, the members, and tours slash travels. Most importantly, the music that got these projects the impactful recognition for listeners and the fans of the thousands, millions, and in some cases, billions. For a project to qualify in this series, the following must be met. First, 10 plus years of the project name being active. An important note, the project name cannot change to a completely different name. Second, at least one main headlining tour or direct support tour of the project's time. Special, special cases can qualify. And third, must have a minimum of three EPs, one album, and or several songs slash remixes published. Special note, the project name can have a time of taking a break from the scene due to health slash unfortunate circumstances, as long as the creator of the project doesn't confirm the end of such project in less than 10 years. Now with that said, welcome to the fifth episode of Electric DM10. Well, Ravers, this might be the fastest Electric DM10 I've done yet, not only because I'm covering one of the many that deserves to have more recognition of his music, but also one of the many underrated OGs of the EDM universe. Kill. Well, there goes that sound effect, and seems like... Kill. Hey, I'm trying to speak here. Can you give me a sec? Kill. Okay, okay, yes, I'll, I'll do it. Let's go. Real ravers might know who will be covered in this episode, for those that have recognized that sound effect. And for those that don't, it's Kill the Noise. And for this DJ and producer, we've got a fair amount to cover. So let's go. Kill the Noise, created by Jacob Stangzak. I believe I said his name correctly. Uh, uh, man, sorry, Jacob, if I'm mispronouncing your name. I'm terrible with names. Well, Jacob is an American DJ and producer originating from Rochester, New York. He specializes in dubstep. In fact, he is one of the pioneers of bro step, in my opinion. Also is familiar with some drum step, drum and bass, along with a bit of electro house. Looking into his bio, some sources mention Jacob started with the music world since 2003. Others do say his journey started in 2004, so we'll just say in the early 2000s. He actually created the name Kill the Noise in 2007 after being under another name for around two to three years. I'll let you know what that name is in the fun facts section. One of his first early releases was called Lightspeed, having its place on Play Me Records in 2008. Continuing into the late 2000s, Kill the Noise releases a fair amount of singles on SoundCloud before meeting some of the most influential juggernaut producers of the EDM scene, including Skrillex, Porter Robinson, 12 Planet, and more. As the 2010 years went underway, Kill the Noise releases his first album called Roots. As he was alongside some of the early legends and with great connections, he went to be a direct supporting DJ for many of his OG comrades. Let's not forget, he has also collaborated with a good amount of producers that some would even argue his works with some songs represent a certain part of the early to mid 2000s decade. A few years later, during the late 2010s, Kill the Noise joins Ophelia Records, created by Seven Lions. He stands as one of the seven pillars of the record label. I personally call these seven, including Kill the Noise, the pillars. Why? Take a look at this picture right here with the song Pantheon, which he has done a mega collab with the rest of the producers that are a part of the record label. This right here is just so cool with how all seven of them are equal holding this building and creating this, in my opinion, one of the most iconic collaborations that I have heard in electronic dance music. Seven producers with one song. And I believe one of the seven mentioned that they've gone through various versions of this collaboration. But imagine if they were to release an EP of their favorite honorable mentioned versions of Pantheon. That'd be pretty sick. So getting off topic, let's go back to Kill the Noise. As the pandemic took its toll on the music world and touring, Jago came to the realization of having more time to spend with his family, but also in working at his studio for more upcoming albums. Some songs were released as of mid-2022, 
We have a couple of the albums in a bit. But jumping into 2023, Kill the Noise and another old school producer by the name Bro Safari have decided to combine forces and create Kill Safari. The two performed for the first time under this back to back on October 14th, 2023 in the Caverns Festival, Tennessee. And it seems the two will continue to do this at Ultra Music Festival 2024. Speaking of 2024, a live show with a unique lineup for Kill the Noise's Hollow World performance named Guillotine will be taking place as a tour that starts this month, February 2024. My personal opinion, this is going to be a unique and monumental tour slash performance for the project and for Jacob. Let's take a look at the travels and tours that he has done. Jacob has traveled all over the world from signature clubs to sold out festivals including EDC, Lollapalooza, Ultra Music Festival, Electric Forest, Fuji Rock Festival, Tomorrowland, and several others. And a fun fact of 2014, before getting into the fun fact section, Kill the Noise collaborated with a record label that I didn't even expect. This was Ajunabi, and he partnered with Matt Zo going on tour with him under the name Kill the Zo Part 1. He also went on tour with Skrillex's Monster Tour in 2014 too. In the early 2020s, after the pandemic was lifted and nearing completion with his Embrace album, Jacob went forth on the Embrace tour. One of the destinations was in LA and I was able to see at least half of it, if not a little more. I also heard that the song Turn Off the Lights went to another level of a vibe in Exchange LA. Before moving into the fun facts of the video, let's see the music numbers for Kill the Noises music accounts. For SoundCloud, he has 3.69 million followers as of February 2024 and 147 tracks. And with Spotify, he has over 740,000 monthly listeners. So these are very impressive numbers. Now for the fun facts section. He recently got a big ouch with a pet of his nearly choking to death. You can pause, read, and get a picture of what went down. Jacob, I hope he's recovering well from this. Kill the Noise worked on multiple major film soundtracks, including the 2014 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. One of the songs he worked and collaborated with several hip-hop rappers was Shellshocked. He was also a part of Korn's 10th studio album as he produced a few songs for them. He made some Electro House before shifting to the dubstep and brostep era. Jacob has a family and likes to play Minecraft with his 7-year-old son and his gang on occasion. This was from an Ask Me Anything Reddit from late 2023, but his favorite video game of all time, Bloodborne. Another Ask Me Anything question being answered was in relations to Skrillex. Many would know that Jake has collaborated with Sonny during his early times. Jake states that Sonny works very mysteriously. Who knows if the two will ever collab again. His first DJ name before Kill the Noise was Iwun. Iwun? I wonder what he had in mind when he did this DJ name. Eh. Kill the Noise's style was one of the first original producers with the Bro Step era from the early 2010s. Some others that would be mentioned would be Skrillex, would be 12th Planet, etc. And a few others that come to mind as they were making their names would be Barely Alive and Getter. Hearing the screechy pitches and glitched up growls in the headbanging madness, some songs even hearing an electronic screech saying the word kill. Later down the line, the transitioning into melodic dark EDM was when he stepped into Ophelia Records, created by Seven Lions, along with a sprinkle of other electronic based songs. Some of the producers that have collaborated with Kill the Noise's career would include Feed Me, 12th Planet, Skrillex, Madzo, even some that I didn't even know that he collaborated with. Miha, Wolfgang Garner, Virtual Riot, Tritonal, and more. And along with a bunch of singers including Fat Man Scoop, Halion, Mako, Spencer Ludwig, and more. Now that I think about it, I remember seeing Kill the Noise back to back Miha with a drum and bass set with Brownies and Lemonade. This was before Subfocus took over the stage. I do have some footage that I'm be showing on the screen. I just remembered it as I'm doing this audio. If he can have a song collaboration with Run, that will be something. That's something incredible to hear. 
and a massive mention with the seven production collaboration of Ophelia Records that Kill the Noise took part in with Blastoise, Demebo, Jason Ross, Seven Lions, Trivecta, and Wooly in Pantheon. Of course, he also has collaborated with the other six pillars of Ophelia separately. Let's jump into the discography. Singles, whew, he has so many. As I mentioned in the SoundCloud, he has over 120 singles alone. And some of them that I can note on will be Far Away, Louder, Cold Hearted, The Blood, many, many, many more. Some singles are mainly targeted and work with massive crowds for a big interaction. The two of them that will come to mind will be the collabs with Snails and Sullivan King, which shake the ground and front to back. He has done quite a bit of EPs. The first one being mentioned would be Kill, Kill, Kill EP. Kill the Noise called this one an EP for both original and remixes in this, including Dylan Francis, Alvin Risk, and Kwan. This was back in 2011 when he released this. 2012, he releases his Black Magic EP and a Black Magic remixes EP in 2013. Another EP worth mentioning would be Give Out Broken Pains of 2023 with old school works that he has done. As I mentioned earlier, it would be the Roots EP and Roots Remixed EP. And I'm saying EP a lot, but one more mention of that word. Some of these have the original song with the extended version and other producers that have remixed it. One would be Recess, which Kill the Noise collaborated with Skrillex. And in the EP is a notable remix of that song by Valentino Khan. Now, jumping into the albums, he has released a good amount of albums in his time. Starting with the occult classic, 10 songs in this album, released in 2015. The alternative classic remix album, 15 songs, uh, 15 remixes in 2016. Some of these include Rez, Nightmare, Slander, Gammer, and more. In the early 2020s, the album of Embraced was released with 11 songs in 2023. And an Embrace reanimated with 14 remixes on the same year. Two that I would mention at the, off the top of my head for this remix album would be More Kismet and Zavi. And with his recent album release with Ophelia Records, and this is Hollow World with a total of 10 songs. Hollow World reanimated just got released as I was looking into the last minute edits for this script, and it was released as of this month, February 2024. And the remixes go with Feed Me, Matt Zo as some of the OGs. However, some newcomers are coming in with their remixes, which would be Starseed, Jiqui, and more. Well, we are now into the personal recommendations. And here are some of my personal favorites. And I know there may be a few that I'm missing out on, but here they are. Turn off the lights, Give Out, Don't Give Up On Me, The Blood VIP, Horizon, Ultraviolet, Right In Time, and of course, one of my personal collaborated favorites, Pantheon. And of course, Recess. Also, let's not forget about the remixes. He did a remix of Diplodocus from Noisia. Mighty Good with 6060. Like a Bitch remix from Zomboy. And of course, Rip and Dip, one of his most iconic remixes that he did for Gatter. Now we're coming to a close with this documentary, but I want to get the personal thoughts before wrapping it up. Unlike the previous Electro DM10, which was Aptic. I haven't met Aptic in person, but if you haven't seen the documentary covering him, feel free to check it out after this video. It mean a lot to me. I have met and spoken to Jacob in person, and it was really cool to just briefly talk with him with a good 30 seconds as he attended an album release party for Jason Ross at Academy LA. We were at the lot, and here's some of the footage that I'll get you to go on the screen. Yeah, he was a bit occupied with his son when I first met him. And this was a, a surreal moment of seeing one of the OGs. And that's what I really love about the EDM culture. Getting to know the DJs if you have the opportunity to. Because so many get praised with their iconic sounds, their music, who they are, how they're themed, etc. And it was pretty funny of how <laughs> his son got flipped off by one of his friends. It was pretty hilarious. Also got to see him again and just to share like a brief uh, rave or raver moment when he went on stage for Halion's performance at the Fonda Theater with one of the collabs that he did with her which was Give Out. 
So that's going to be it for me. Massive shout outs to Jacob for keeping this name alive and absolutely killing it for over 15 years. No pun intended. But here's some extra footage that I have of him in Exchange LA with his Embrace tour. Like I said, I wanted to be there for a little more time, but at that time I was in a different chapter of my life doing full time work before my physical breakdown happened in my body. But that's going to be it for me. Thank you all, Ravers, so much for tuning in to now five episodes of Electric DM10. And I'm thinking with every five, 10, 15 episodes, I would like to make some type of DJ set. I'm, I'm thinking about doing it with the previous DJs that I have covered from one to five, and it'll be six to 10 and so on. Let's see if I'm able to do that for my mix cloud because I haven't uploaded a mix in years. Go check out Kill The Noise's music. His page and social medias will be in the EDM box below along with my socials is gonna be in the EDM box below. Once more, I can't thank you enough for watching in even if I get like 10 people to hear and listen to these documentaries. It means a lot to me. Coming up next for the Electric DM 10 episode six will be Henry Fong. Lastly, keep listening, stay safe, and rave on.